So, the second part of the recursion chapter, we are going to start with a few algorithms that we already talked about uh, earlier when we talked about arrays. And the first one is the selection sort uh, algorithm. If we read the definition of the selection sort algorithm, we'll see that the selection sort algorithm is actually a recursive algorithm. What we are doing is finding the smallest element in the list, swap it with the first number, and then ignore the first number and sort, using again selection sort, the remainder, remaining elements in the smaller list. So this is a recursive problem. We only have to find how to implement it using a helper function. So the algorithm that we saw earlier this semester when we talked about a recursion is an iterative alg alg algorithm. We define the sort method that takes a list as a list of doubles, defines a low index and a high index. The low index is assigned 0 and the high index is assigned the length of the list minus 1. As long as low is less than high, we find the smallest element in the list from position low to high. The index of the minimum is given the value of low and the minimum is the element at index low in the list. For every integer i, starting from position low plus 1, as long as i is less than or equal with i, if list of i is less than the minimum, that means that the minimum is not the minimum, the minimum should be set to be list of i and the index of minimum is equal with i. List, once we found the minimum, we swap, if necessary, the element at index low with the element at index index of minimum. So list of index of minimum is equal with list of low, and list of low is assigned minimum, and low is incremented with 1. Now, it's very simple to change this while statement into a recursion. All that we need to do is to add a helper method with the extra two parameters, low and high, and to transform the while statement into an if statement and call recursively the same method with low equal with low plus one. So if you look at this implementation with a while loop, the moment that we transform it into a recursion, the while loop transformed into an if statement and the addition of 1 to the low is a recursive call. We basically, what we are saying is that we sort recursively the list starting from position 0 for low and the last element for high. If low is less than high, if the low value is less than the high value recursively, then we sort, that basically means find the smallest element and swap it with the element at index low, and then call recursively sort with the list low plus 1 and high. So we increment low and we call the same method. The base case is the moment that low is not less, strictly less than high. That basically means the if statement is not going to be executed, we immediately return. That means we reach the end and we actually return with the list sorted. So it's the same algorithm that we saw in the case of selection sort, but implemented with recursion instead of iteration. Any questions? Do you want me to actually implement it? First in the non-recursive version and then change, make these two changes to make it recursive. It's up to you if we want actually this to be implemented or you want to test it yourself. Yes, of course. So one student, Jose, is basically uh, proposing that we implement it. So I'm going to create a new class. Let's call it selection sort. So 
So first, we have to imagine how this function will be called. So in our case, we create a array of doubles list. And this is a new double array. We actually can initialize it right here in place. Let's say the elements of the array are 5.4, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 1.2 and maybe other elements in this double array. We would like to invoke the method sort that sorts this array, array list and then if we print the elements I'm going to use a double uh, a for each loop the elements should be sorted. D followed by a space. So first we said we are going to implement the method sort as an iterative method. So this is a public static method that doesn't return anything, modifies the order of the elements, sort takes an array of doubles and here we are going to have that implementation so what we said is we are going to define two variables low that is assigned zero and high that is assigned the last element of the list so high will be the list dot length minus one then we had that while loop. The while loop said as long as low is less than high, first we find the minimum element in the array. So that will be a, we first assign a double minimum, the element in the list at index low, and the minimum index, the value of low. We have a for loop. We can also get rid of this later that iterates from with some ind index j or even i from low plus one as long as i is less than i, maybe less than equal. If the minimum is greater than the element in the list at index i, then the minimum should actually be the element in the list at index i, and the minimum index should be the index i. After we finish finding the minimum, we swap, if necessary, I will actually implement it if necessary, if low is different than mean index, then a list of mean index should be assigned list of low and list of low should be assigned minimum and low is incremented with one. Let's use the incre auto increment. So if we run this method, it brings them in ascending order 0 0.0, 1.2, 5.5, 6.4, 7.0 and 8.0. So this is the iterative method we are going to transform it into a recursion. So instead of doing the while loop, I'm going to invoke another sort method with list. The value of low is zero and the value of high is list dot length minus one. So this new method 
is an overloaded method static void sort which takes the double array list an integer for low and an integer for high the while statement becomes an if statement and the increment of low becomes a recursive call to sort with the same list low plus one and high so now if we run the program again the output is exactly the same we only rewrote this we rewrote the while statement into a recursion any questions great so now we can return to recursive binary search so binary search is searching for a key or an element in a sorted array and the time is actually very good it's a logarithmic time it's logarithmic base uh, 2 of uh, the size of the sorted array that we pass to this algorithm so the way that the algorithm works is it since the array is sorted we can directly compare the key with the element in the middle of our sorted array if the key is less than the element of the mid in the middle then we can recursively search for the key in the first half of the array so we can discard the second half of the array if the key is equal with the element in the middle then the search ends with a match and we basically return the index of that position the middle element index if the key is greater than the middle element then we recursively search basically we search again using the same binary search method the key in the second half of the array so we basically discard the first half of the array we search in the second half again if we implement it with a while loop binary search takes an integer list a key uh, an integer low is set to zero an integer high is set to the length of the array minus one as long as low is less than equal with the key with the with high the middle index is the average of low plus high divided by two the key is compared with element the element in the middle if the key is less than the list of middle then the high is decremented with one else if the key is equal with the element in the middle then we return the middle uh, element the middle index else low is incremented uh, uh, low is assigned middle plus one so as you can basically see it does that algorithm that we talked about earlier this semester which was basically the binary search algorithm finally if low is not less than the high then we want to return a negative value that we didn't find the key so if we are looking for 6 we are basically comparing 6 with 4 6 is greater than 4 then we move low to index 3 now we compare 6 with 5 uh, 6 with 6 and we find it immediately we can transform this while loop into a recursion by just creating a helper method so in this case we call recursive binary search of low high and the previous two arguments list and key and recursive binary search if the low is greater than high basically our while loop became an if statement if low is greater than high we return minus low minus one else we compute the index in the middle if the key is less than the list of middle we call recursively recursive binary search of the list the key and low and middle minus one if it's equal we return the index middle otherwise we call recursive binary search of the key the uh, list the key the middle plus one and the high do you want me to implement it anyone A U. Yes. Okay. So let's implement the method recursive binary search. 
we are going to implement binary search first with an iteration and then we are going to do it recursively. Binary search. So again, we first write the main method. We want to find out how are we going to implement to call this method. So let's assume that we have a list of elements and these are integer uh, elements. Let's say they are ordered 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, maybe 10. And we want to find what is the index in this array list of the element maybe 9. 9 is not in the list. We actually will get an index where it should be. Similarly, we can ask for a different the index of uh, let's say 7 and then we print the index of 7. So we are going to print this too. The index of 9. And also the index of Seven, which is index of seven. So our public static integer binary search method takes an integer array list and an integer key. The way that it was implemented in the non-recursive version, in the iterative version, is that we define two parameters, low, which is 0, and high, which is the list length, minus 1. Then we have a while loop. As long as low is less than high, less than equal with i, we are going to do that algorithm. If first we compute the middle index, mid is low plus i, everything divided by 2. If the key is less than list of middle, then low high could be assigned middle minus 1. Else, if the key is equal with list of middle, then we can directly return the middle index. Else, else the low should be assigned the middle plus 1. If we didn't find the element, we return minus 1, mi uh, minus low, minus 1. So let's see what we get in the case of 7, of 9. It says that if not there, we get a negative value. In the case of 7, it's 4. And if we look in this array, the index of 7 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is correct. Now we said we want to get rid of this while loop. What we can do is to write an if statement instead of the while loop. We are going to use a recursive call. So let's call the method binary search of the list, the key, the low, and the high. Mm, 
now we write this overloaded method. with a double list uh, integer array integer key integer low and integer high And at the end of the if statement, we are going to call recursively binary search on list key the new low and the new high. I think that is it. It returns exactly the same values. Any questions? So we use this recursive method, which we call recursively right here. Any questions? Good, excellent. So if there are no questions, let's return to the original problem. The original problem was that how can I find there are some problems that uh, are impossible to solve without recursion. Like for instance, find all the files in a certain directory that contain uh, a certain file name or find the size of a directory. The size of, the di of a directory is the sum of the sizes of the files in that directory, but it may also contain subdirectories in which case I will have to call the same function to find the size of the subdirectories. For instance, this directory example has files 1 to fm and the subdirectory is d1 to dn. The size of the directory is the size of the files summed f1 to fm plus the result of the directory size function applied on the subdirectory is d1 to dn. So in Java I would have to import the java.io file that will give me the size of the directory also a method to check if the directory is a file or not. I can ask the user to enter a directory or I could just use the current directory. I will do that in the example. Then I will create a new directory object or new file object for that directory and I want to find the get size of that directory. The method get size takes a file as a parameter, returns a long. The longest is assigned zero. If the file is a directory, then I get the list of files from that directory, which is the result of this function, get list, uh, uh, list files. For every one of the files, for every index from 0 to the length of that array, the size is incremented with the result of get size of files of i. Once I'm done by summing up all of them, I basically uh, uh, return the value of that size. Otherwise, the base size of the directory is the ba if the file is, is not a directory, I'm just returning the length of that file. So let's implement this in Java. Again, we are going to create a new class. This class should be called directory size. Let's assume that all that we want is the size of the current directory. So get size of a new file for the current directory. And that dot slash is the current directory. Now some people just, oops, just use dot for the current directory. So let's implement this method. Get size takes the file as an input. Uh, 
um, we said that for this file f, which we need to import the class file from java.io, we are going to check if this file is a directory. If it's not a directory, we are going to just return f dot length. Otherwise, we are going to declare a new variable files, which is the result of f dot list files. A variable size and for every file let's call it F2 or C for child in files I'm going to increment the size with get size the recursive call of that child finally we return the size so let's see how big is, for instance, my root directory. I think I implemented everything, but still there is an error. Oh, we forgot to put semicolon in this line. So the, the size of the current source directory, because I have so many files, is 177,000 bytes. 177 kilobytes. Uh, this is the size of all the Java files that I implemented this semester. I have about 100 files. Some of them are from the lecture, some of them are from the homework, some of them are from uh, the exams. Any questions? There are other problems. This is another classical standard problem in recursion called the Towers of Hanoi. There are n disks labeled from 1 to n, three towers or pegs labeled A, B, and C. No disk can be on top of a smaller disk. The sizes of the disk are the labels, so the uh, disk 1 has size 1, disk 2 has size 2, disk 3 has size 3, disk n has size n. All the disks are initially placed on the tower A. We want to move all the disks to tower B. Only one disk can be moved at a time using the rule above that no disk can be on top of a smaller disk. So we want to move all the disks from tower A to tower B. What we can do is we can decompose this problem. We can move n minus 1 disks from tower A to tower C. And then we can move the base disk from tower A to tower B. And then move back the, the disks, n minus 1 disks, from tower C to tower B, using the tower or the peg A as uh, an empty peg or auxiliary. So what we can do is basically we can move the first disk on the, from tower A to B, then the second disk to tower C, then the disk from tower B to tower C. Then we can move the, tower, the big disk 3 from tower A to tower B. Then we can move the disk, the uh, small disk from, or the disk 1 from tower C to tower A. Then we can move the middle disk or disk 2 from tower C to B and the last disk from tower A to B. So if we decompose this problem, we basically see that we moved n minus 1 disks from tower A to C, then disk n from tower A to B, then n minus 1 disks from tower C to B, and we solve the problem. So we basically call recursively move n minus 1 disks from one tower to another twice. That is the solution. If we want to move n disks from tower A to C with the assistance of the tower B, we can move. Uh, we, uh, we want to move n disks from the tower A to B with the assistance of the tower C. We can move n minus one disks from A to C. Then we move the n disk from.
from A to B, then we move the n minus 1 disk from C to B. And the solution is very short. Basically, if we have three disks and we want to move, or any number of disks and we want to move them, what we can do is to implement a recursive method, move disks, that takes an integer n, the number of disks, the from tower, the to tower, and the auxiliary tower, which initially they are a, b, and c. If n is equal with 1, that's the stop condition, then we move the n disk from the from tower to the to tower. Otherwise, we move n minus 1 disks from the from tower to the auxiliary tower using the to tower as auxiliary tower. Then we move the end disk from the from tower to the to tower. And then we call again recursively to move n minus 1 disks from the auxiliary tower to the to tower using the from tower as an auxiliary tower. So this is a very short solution, but the problem is very complex. For instance, if we want to move five disks, you will see that there are more than 25 moves. Okay? And in this case, I will just copy the problem because it's too simple to just implement it. So let's create a new class, Hanoi, Towers of Hanoi, and we are going to implement the method. So if we run it, it asks us how many oh, did we, we didn't import scanner. So how many disks, let's say three di uh, five disks, the number of moves are more than 25. Any questions? So again, the way that it works, although it looks very simple, and it is simple if you think about it, is actually moving the disks, the n minus 1 disks from one tower to another. And there are a lot of different problems that are similar to this in recursion. One is the greatest common divider. The greatest common divider can be between two integers, positive integers, can be done in two ways, in three different ways, in fact. One is the brute force approach. Start with the minimum of the two numbers and try to find that divisor, that is a divisor of both numbers. So start with the minimum between n and m, down to 1, to check if each, if each what is the first number that is a common divisor to both m and n. The second is the Euclid method, where we basically start, we have the two numbers, and we try to find, divide them and collect the remainder and check, is the remainder 0? If it's not 0, we take the remainder and the smaller between the two numbers, and we continue the same algorithm. Divide again the number with the remainder, again, Try to see, is the remainder 0? If the remainder is 0, we return that smaller between the two numbers. That is the divisor. And we can implement that Euclid algorithm recursively. We can basically say, continue this process until you the remainder becomes 0. Then return that smaller number. That is the greatest common divider. So the first implementation, the brute force approach, First, the minimum is n. If m is less than n, the minimum is m. For every i between the minimum and 1, by decrementing i with 1 after each iteration, if i is both a divisor of both m and n, then return i. Otherwise, continue decrementing i and find that common divisor. If we didn't find it up to 1, then return 1. The Euclidean algorithm says, first get the positive values of m and n in two variables t1 and t2. r is the result of t1 modulo t2, the remainder of the division in integer, as long as r is different than 0, while r is different than 0. t1 is t2, t2 is r, r is the remainder between t1 and t2. When r becomes 0, T2 contains the greatest common divider. 
instead of the while loop, now at this point we can basically see that every while loop can be written as a recursion. Instead of the while loop, we can use an if statement. So this is a recursive method for GCD that says if m modulo n is equal with 0, then return m, n. Otherwise, return the greatest common divider between n and m modulo n. From iteration to recursion, every iteration, like every for loop, can be transformed into a recursion. So, for instance, let's take a look at this simple example. It has two for loops. The first for loop iterates over some i from 1 to n, n being the parameter in the method m. The first for loop will become an if statement in a recursive helper method that takes also the parameter i as a parameter. So, we have the original method m, which is this uh, uh, method, the first method, mr, m recursive, which calls the method mr of 1 and n. n is the original n, and i is the new variable, which i is initially initialized with 1. Instead of the for loop, we have now an if statement with the same condition with the for loop. So it's if i is less than n, we have the same body, the body in this case is this for loop, which we are going to implement it recursively too, is going to be another recursive method, m recursive 2, which has i, n, and also this new variable j. So mr of 1 for j, i, and n. We have the print statement of this print i, and then the recursive call for the current recursive method, mr of i plus 1 and n. Same way we implement the second for loop. The second for loop is this for loop. This is a mr of 1, i, and n. j is initialized with 1. If j is less than n, that is the same condition that we saw in the second for loop, then we print out i plus j, and then we call recursively mr of j plus 1, i, and n. It's basically increment j with 1, and then run the same method. The base cases in this case are the else parts. So, else don't do anything, else don't do anything. That is all about recursion. And next class we are going to write a couple of uh, printing problems using recursion. I'm going to save the lecture, again video for today, and then we are going to go over the homework uh, questions, also from recursion. So let's...